G'day everybody. Uh, welcome to my live talk. Uh, I'm in Tari Showground. I'm just borrowing the tea rooms uh, to do the live talk because I was just outside to do it and the zakatas started to get really loud so I thought oh, I'd better come inside and um, somewhere where it's a bit more quiet so people can hear me. So yeah, I've, uh, I've shortened some of the questions because I've written them all down on, on paper because uh, I'm on the road. So um, but yeah, I've got all the questions here. And thank you for the questions. It was really good ones that, uh, that have come through. And we've just finished a four day clinic uh, here in Taree. Uh, we're going to start another one the day after tomorrow. But yeah, it was a really good clinic. We had some young horses that were sort of getting, you know, part of their starting done and, and, and all sorts of things. So yeah, it was just really exciting and good to have a big showground to use too. Uh, first of all, Pat. Um, also, I just apologise about there's a bit of an echo in this room. I, I, I notice it, but you guys may not notice it, so hopefully it'll be okay. Um, so Pat, I'm wondering, since you're not a fan of direct and drive and lunging, what do you do, what do you, how do you take the edge off a colt before you st uh, step on? I'm new to your program and replacing my old ways with your ideas, thank you. Um, I'm... Yeah, the, the reasons, and you know that I'm not a fan of driving, is because we start to use it, and, and we can use it as a bit of a shortcut when we're training. So um, if I need a horse, there's a particular horse at the clinic here that needed to move around a bit, and um, you can still send a horse out, you can still lunge them. The reason I'm not a fan of lunging young horses is, is um, I like to get them to do straight lines and corners, opposed to just, um, going around and around and around because you can really lose the steering on a horse if you um, send it around, okay? Because a circle to me is like an endless straight line. So, but I'm not saying that I don't get young horses to do circles, but I do like to know that they're following a feel of an inside rein and they're turning and you've got a bit of a connection through that feel on that, on that, on that lead rope or that lunge rope that you've got that you're using. Um, so a lesson I do um, in getting a horse to travel is I teach them more about the leading hand. Sorry about that. Teach them more about the leading hand. So the leading hand, you know when, when you're on a circle and you want to lead that horse out and you push your leading hand out like this, um, what happens is if the horse doesn't go, it's very common that people push into the drive line to send the horse forward and through. Um, I really spend a fair bit of time trying to teach the horses to lead up so I can get them fairly close, push through with that leading hand and they'll trot up to the feel of that lead. So a lesson I do if I want a horse to travel and go forward without you know, pushing it around and try, kind of chasing on it to get it to go forward, is I'll teach it to lead really good and then I'll have like a long rope that I can feed out uh, where I and I'll push the lead and I'll get that horse's eye to go past my shoulder and trot past me and as it trots past me I'll let that lead out and then the horse might get a little lost uh, might go in a straight line to the end of the lead then I'll just draw it back a little bit pull the feel on it step back a little to bring the horse back through and then I'll just lead it through now I can do that walking in a straight line forward to start with and get the horse to trot past me and um, you know I can give it a bit of a cluck and encouragement so when I lift my energy up I push my hand the horse trots through from the feel of the lead and then they feed that lead out so that horse can go trotting out. And then what starts to happen, they trot out and then they, they, they get to the end of the lead and, and, and you get a corner. And then you kind of can bring them back and trot them past again until what starts to happen. On that long lead, you'll be able to lift that leading hand and that horse knows it's got to get uh, past your shoulder with its eye and then it'll kind of trot up. And after a while you get to the stage that your horse is going out on a big circle and trotting and then you can even get them up to canter purely by lifting your energy in that leading hand. And, and uh, instead of putting my intention and my drive into the horse, I'm putting my life and my intention into the direction that I'm kind of traveling. So what, what starts to happen is the horse starts to look, you and the horse it starts to look like you two are, are traveling together. And, and going together, but the horse, you're, you're on a small circle on the inside and the horse is out on a big circle. But it, you, you know, you might have a few corners to start with, uh, but that's a good thing because the horse will get to the end of the rope and come back, get to the end of the rope and come back a little, and then you just start to keep 
you know, working on it till your horse is traveling through. So once again, just lead them past so they can trot up um, past you while you're walking and you can just lift your energy and push on that lead and they can lead through. Uh, the route. It might take a little longer than just getting in and driving them forward, but uh, what you end up with is a horse that leads a, a, a lot better. So the floating, the tying up, all those other things um, get a lot better because your horse has really learned to come through from that pole pressure. And after a while it turns from pole pressure into they see your life and they know that, that's a, that, that, that you're going together, but they're sort of to get in front of you. Um, and it, it doesn't look like you're chasing them because your intention is going where you want to go kind of thing. I hope you understand that, but there's a video actually online. Um, I think it might be getting a horse to canter on a long line. I think Carrie's got a question here later. It was her horse at a clinic uh, that, that she wanted to make the horse go faster and carry the saddle. Um, but not want to chase it. So, so there is a video there of, of me doing this lesson with the, with the horse or Carrie doing it and me helping with it, uh, of where I was getting her to lead the horse past and, and, and sort of go up into a canter. And yeah, there are times with a young horse, they've got to travel, they've got to carry the saddle, they've got to get used to just moving freely and not get all funny about it. And it's important that we can sort of do that. Um, Tony, this is a nice question. Well, it's more of a bit of a story and what's happening because there's a little horse called Harley that um, that came to a clinic once and then and then Tony came back to another clinic and she was really desperate to get a bit of help in trying to get him to come around and be quiet and like people so uh, well not like people he did like people but he was just very frightened of people on his back and uh, and around his back end so we did a lot of work uh, with getting his confidence up and, and, and from that clinic by the sounds of it, I'll just read it. Just need some ideas for Harley. He's going really well. Uh, he's still a bit reactive when you first get on. Not bad with legs now, but I've noticed he only scoots away from left leg. He's a bit braced in the right side and grabs or holds his breath trotting. He also reacts to the loop in the reins changing from the right to the left, but not the left to the right. He can now stop and back up a lot better and trot with relaxation. So I'm guessing when you said he was holding his breath in the trot, he relaxes after that 10 minutes because it says here it takes about 10 minutes for him to relax. So I'm guessing it's a 10 minute sort of sensory sort of slight sensory overload for him and then he kind of sort of, uh, you know, relaxes into things and then that's when he relaxes at the trot and things like that. But it's great that you're riding him and it's great that, you, you know, it's only kind of taking that 10 minutes to settle down and get his confidence and, and start to sort of um, get really, you know, a lot quieter with you that he can travel along and, and carry you along and feel okay about it. Uh, he's a really sweet little pony, but, but just, just, just quite frightened in that area. But just some exercises, I think, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing you, you want a bit of help with, because after the 10 minutes, his things seem to settle down a bit. Um, a lot of horses that are troubled from left to right eye, and they're, they're, they're troubled on the left side or the right side. I, don't, I won't really talk about the exact side, but um, so you'll have a braced side where you, where you might want to, the, the first, you know, so many minutes I'm riding a horse, it might want to steer one way because it doesn't want to see you uh, all with that eye because it's still a little nervous. Now, those lessons can be helped from the leading by on the ground until the horse loosens up on the eye and just walks past and softens. But I'm guessing you're understanding and doing that because we were doing that at the clinic and, and, and things like that. But you could go back to that leading by until his eye softens on both sides and he allows you softly to be on both sides working from the saddle. Um, so maybe walk him around you with the saddle on a little more before you get on him on one side and on the other just to loosen up that eye and loosen up the other eye. Uh, but when you get on him, what I would do is um, I would just gently, before you walk him off, is do a little bit of flexion. So some people come to clinics and they think, Mark doesn't like flexion. Well, it's not that I don't like, uh, I just don't like the, a lot of the flexion I see when the people are just bending their horses around getting them real loose in the front. Um, but for, for horses that are troubled, I think it's important sometimes just to stand them still a little bit and take a little feel to get their horse, their thoughts cocked to the left, and then just cock their thoughts to the right. And then, and then they kind of lose you a little with the outside eye. And you just at a standstill, you just do that so you can go, oh, and then he relaxes a little, and then he relaxes a little, just doing this one. You don't want to separate his whole neck and head and 
thoughts from his feet. So you don't want to be kind of just stretching him around like this and bending him around with his feet kind of stuck on the ground. But you've done a clinic, a couple of clinics to know, you know, what a horse out of balance starts to feel like when they get too bendy in the front. So it's okay to sort of just relax and stand him and just get him looking from side to side and side to side. And what you can do while he's standing still is you can try and just cock his head that side and then while, you're, while he's bent that way, you just rub that leg on him and then rub that leg on him. And then you can just play with the reins and just while he's standing and Tibby kind of relaxes and lets down a little at, at, at all those little exercises. Um, instead of going straight into walking and saying turn, turn, turn. But when you get to the walking part of it, what I would do is I'd start to walk him and go from left eye to right eye to left eye to right eye just just little bits like little serpentines as you're starting off just so he's not on that eye for too long and he gets to his safe eye and then he goes to his bad eye and then he gets to his safe eye and, and, and things like that just until he just gets a bit better and better and what you'll do is you'll start to just uh, strengthen those turns I mean so, so so they get tighter and tighter so he's got more of a bend and he's looking around but you know uh, on a horse that's really tight and, and doesn't want to look at me with one, one of his more nervous eyes what I'll do is I'll, I'll just it, it's like rated exposure or graded exposure where you expose that eye a little bit and then you take him back to his confident eye then you expose that eye a little bit and then you take him back to his confident side and um, and, and that's the same with the loopy rein and things like that you just kind of expose him a little and then take him away from it and then expose him a little and then take him away from it from that bend I mean and then after a while yeah he'll just roll around um, it just reminds me of a story years ago not a story a, a, something that happened with a horse it was a really really sensitive Arab horse that I did and really nice horse but oh man it was sensitive and you know you, when you're in the trade to do horses all the time you know when I'm teaching, I'm trying to teach people to don't leave any stones unturned and, you know, um, don't cut any corners. You know, I'm, I, 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 it'd be silly for me to teach people to cut corners, but when you're training horses day after day, you know, sometimes I'll be like, oh, yeah, I've done this, Ash, you'll be right, it'll be right, I'll just go and do this. And, and, uh, and, and they're the times I've sort of got myself stuck, but there was this little horse that I was riding and, and um, I had to give it a little bit of bend each way quite a few times before I rode it and before I rode it on the right eye I'd have to wean it to the right eye every ride for like uh, I don't know how many rides might have been 10 rides just wean it to the right eye left eye right eye otherwise it'd be sort of like that and one day I kind of you know <laughs> did it twice which is silly you know like you should learn by the first time but anyway I got on the horse and uh, walked it off and didn't do my little weaning eye exercise and I rode it off and it was going nice and I'm just riding around, nice kind of brisk walk and, and, I'm, uh, and I'm still on its good eye and I just sort of half daydream and didn't even think and just picked up that rein to ride it off on the right eye and just jumped so far sideways that it just flip on its side like that and it just look and just flip on its side and, and it's like that woke me up pretty quick and, but sure enough I did it another time where I was sort of thinking oh it's going okay now and I didn't do that little exposing exercise once I'd done that exercise and I'd got the horse to look either side and then walk softly, look on either side, just wean it, then I could walk, trot, look either side, things like that, go around through the trees and, and it was fine going from eye to eye and it'd loosen all that brace up. But if I didn't give it that little exposure lesson slowly to start with, um, yeah, it'd just go and fall over on its side. It, it just got such a fright. And um, so really, that horse really showed me how important it is to those horses to get get them using that window confidently and that window confidently and uh, yeah but that sort of relates to him a little bit anyway thanks for that Tony that's really good and, and yeah it's nice to hear the feedback and, and I'm really happy that you two are moving forward because I know it was quite stressful not knowing if you could sort of get him to come along but and they're the stories that I really like you know we sometimes people come at the wits end and and, and, and and we can give them some light at the end of the tunnel and give the horse the light at the end of the tunnel so that's great. So Isabella, hi Mark. Just need some ideas on how to keep my mare's head lower and how do you flex her neck head while on her at a standstill? Every time I do, we go around in circles. Thanks. Uh, Isabella, um, head lowering is something um, I don't make a horse lower its head and I don't have necessarily a cue that says lower your head, put your head down. Yes, in leading I do, 
Uh, so if I'm teaching a horse to do stuff, I want to know that I can lift the lead up, the horse's head can come up, I want to know the lead can go down and the horse's head can come down. And I want to know I can do that going backwards or forwards, putting the head up and down, backwards and forwards. So the horse, wherever the rein goes, the horse can lift and lower with the rein. So it's a really important lesson that you can do on the ground to teach the horse it can let go. Some horses, um, they, they start moving their feet and they get anxious. So, so a good thing on the ground is teaching your horse to just loosen up. Now the reason a horse relaxes, so some people say when you lower their head and they release endorphins. I had a lot of horses that put their heads between their legs and bark and for some reason I had the feeling that when their head was between their legs down there they weren't releasing endorphins. <laughs> they were because the, the bucking didn't tell me that they were relaxing. So the, 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 the lowering of the head they won't release endorphins, but the um, the uh, what'll happen is the um, the physical let go of a brace and tension will let a horse relax a little. And that, 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 that's when that you see those signals that the horse is starting to relax, licking and chewing and the eye popping and you know the loosening up of the muzzle and all sorts of things. So um, when a horse is hanging onto a brace or a hard thought, it hangs onto it and it lets go and it goes, oh, right. And it, and it kind of yields a little and then it, then it softens. So walking and picking its head up and down and backing and forward and lowering its head and all that on the ground is really good because it's good for a horse that ties up or gets stuck or going in a horse float, anything like that, it's going to be useful. And it just shows the horse it can yield and lower its head and do stuff. So that's really important. But in the riding part of it, where your horse is going to lower its head is when, when your horse re releases a certain amount of tension. So if your horse is travelling along a little nervous of you, a little nervous of your aids, um, the reins and things like that, what will happen is you'll find that she's carrying her head high, she might be focusing over there somewhere and that means that her mind and her feet are quite far apart so, so her thoughts uh, are either anxious, so sometimes they're, they're, they're actually on you so she's not thinking about what she's doing and she's anxious and she might be have her head up. Others it's because their mind's over there and they're anxious and their head's up. And, um, but really it just means that they're, they're not in the present and they're not relaxed in the present. So, so basically to get a horse to, to, to bring its head down, <coughs> I've got to put its mind and its feet together and put it in the present. So um, I would be working on how does my horse understand my accelerator? Can I drop the reins loose and can the horse travel without keeping on speeding up? I would work on all those things until the horse can travel on a loose rein without speeding up. And I mean slow it down to a slow walk, loosen the rein and the horse can stay in a slow walk. Things like that and you can do a lot in the walk. So something I would probably do is when I get on the horse I'd stand there and wait till the horse is like, okay, I'm here, I'm not going anywhere, I'm with you. Um, I'm with you and we're together, okay, right, so then I'll take a step. And if that mare gets anxious and puts her head up, then I'll stop her and I'll say, can you take a soft step? And I'd wait there until she can stand softly when I've got on her and take a soft step. And then I would work on her acceleration. So instead of trying to get her to come back once she's going fast, I wouldn't let her get to fast. I'd actually work on getting her to speed up with me. And if she goes, then I'd go, hey, stop. You just got braced through your whole body and you took a step and it looks like that step's gonna turn into you carrying your head around in the air. When her horse takes a soft, thoughtful step with you, she'll relax and put her head down and walk forward a lot softer. Um, and I would teach her to, to accelerate with me and I would do slow walk to fast walk and come back and things like that and teach her that it's okay. I think it said to her or him, sorry, me, yeah, um, to relax and then, yeah, we'd, we'd go to, to trot, trot then and I'd get the horse in a fast walk and bring it back down the fast walk to the slow walk and then up until the horse just loosely goes into trot. So I would teach her through heli uh, acceleration to relax with the accelerator or get close enough and, 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 and quiet enough with the accelerator that you've still got impulsion but you, you've not got adrenaline and impulsion and bracing impulsion, okay? And I would work on that that's one part of the spectrum you really have to work on is the issue with you when you're moving her forward. The other thing is when you pick up on the reins, you back her up. If you back her up with two reins, 
she's, she can, learns to loosen and think backwards and then you can relax on the reins. And I would do a lot of backing until you pick up on the reins, her thoughts come back, she relaxes and the feet move backwards, nice and soft. At a walk and a standstill, I'd teach her to lead off with the rein. Just pick up a rein, you'll feel some brace when the thoughts go and she leads off with the rein. I just, and then so she gets very comfortable with leading off with the reins. And then putting all those things together, your horse might start to travel with its head lower. Sometimes when I'm trotting or walking and my horse gets a big brace up like this, I'll take an inside rein and I'll hang on to the inside rein and, and turn the horse until the horse lets go of a hard thought and thinks in the new direction. And then when I feel that, I'll breathe out and relax and the horse should come after that turn, should lower its head a little because you've taken away that hard thought and, and, and offered it a new direction and then the horse will relax a little and, and, and move off. And doing all those things will help her come into a better place. It's not like bump the head down and because if you don't, if you just bump the head down or do all these bump the head down cues, what ends up happening if you don't take the tension away and you don't get that horse in the present, then as soon as you loosen up, the horse just pops its head back up again. The horse has got to willingly start to get in that comfortable head position. And lowering the head and sticking it on the ground is not the answer, just a nice, comfortable. Some horses that are really high will actually come down lower because it's like a bit of a, oh, and they'll go down. And if they're not kind of telescoping and stretching, then they're just putting their head down, then it might just keep them on the forehand. Um, and regarding the, the flexing, it's good that your horse is moving around with the rein in a sense, but with your flexion, um, I'm not a big fan of standing there doing a lot of bending around with the head and neck, um, purely because it, it, it disconnects the back feet from the rein and, and the whole body from the rein if you do too much of it. So what I mean is um, I could stand here really rigid, standing here, and this could be a head and a neck and I could be rigid and just have a floppy arm. Um, but really what balance is, is if this was the horse's head, everything's in flow. Like, you know, everything's like, you know, moving and there's a, it's connected to the whole body. Uh, so if the horse twisted like this and its head was looking over here somewhere, then that hind foot, depending on how you position the rein, is going to loosen up and want to step over uh, and things like that. So it's very important that that, 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 that whole system is is, is connected and um, if we do too much standing with heavy feet as in the horse is standing with his body kind of huh, and bending 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 then we're going to end up with a horse that you know either carries a brace and is bending in the head so it doesn't connect to the feet but if you do have a horse that's got a real strong jaw lock and it doesn't want to like like with the last uh, little pony i was talking about who's a bit nervous to look either side or something like that is is you want the horse just to pick up a rein softly just pick up a little bit of feel on the inside of its mouth just touch that feel and lift the rein close to its neck a little bit but not to push it on the neck and you just hang it there like that and just wait and the horse will flick its ear and thought and look a little and then you loosen up and you do that from side to side you pick up a rein just flick its thought loosen up so you're getting a thought and a loosening of the horse uh, you know the jaw and the head and, and the horse will kind of look to that side a little and think to that side So you're saying thoughts to the right thoughts to the left and that'll sort of prepare them with a loosening of the body uh, By acknowledging the rein But then from there I don't just sort of bend the horse's head round I'll just say from there I'm going to lift the rein and step out and the horse will loosen look and loosen the, and pick up the wither and, and, and reach that inside front foot out if it was standing square if I got the horse's thoughts and got to tip its thoughts a little and I said I'm going to take that rein into my centre then, I, then I'm going to feel underneath my bottom I'd feel the horse loosen up the back and loosen up the, the hindquarter and start to prepare to move the hindquarter even if it just loosened the hindquarter I'd loosen the rein and say thanks for loosening the hindquarter ready to move your feet and that's my version of flexion in a sense that the, the rein translates a message through the whole body of the horse and you can feel it underneath your rump, underneath your bottom. Um, and if you're just bending and you don't feel that. Okay, Helen, that's a good idea. A video of how I'm doing that. Um, in the videos of all the fern videos, I'm doing rein positions and teaching the horse to move from the different positions of the reins. And in there you'll see me using different reins to get the front feet to move, the hind feet to move. But you're right, I might do a broken down video of, 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 of just getting the horse to um, loosen, relax and, and, and even 
you know, just loosen that and prepare that part of the body instead of moving that part of the body. So, so yeah, but with definitely Isabella, it's good that your horse is kind of moving with the rain because standing still and just bending is, is not, not very healthy for the, for the connection of the reins through the whole body. And I used to ride the other way where I used to stand my horses and do a bit more flexion. Um, I've chosen not to do that anymore because I've noticed a big difference in how the horses understand the reins and their willingness to do the movements that I'd like without as much brace and things like that. <laughs> Bridget, I was practicing the circle of death. It's, I, put, I should rename the circle of death. It's a circle I do where I get a horse to loosen up into a circle and it's just a joke where I build this invisible prison and the horse is locked in that prison and, 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 and you have to protect the horse's nose from touching the, the invisible wall Otherwise, it's, it's certain death because it's one of those invisible prisons that you know you touch the wall and you just explode, and that's why I call it the circle of death. But uh, yeah, people probably get the wrong impression. <laughs> um, so where were we, Isabella Megan? Long reigning and Milo. I've been following your series. Now I'm going to be adding to the long reigning to everybody. I, I haven't done the videos yet, but I've been doing more long running at clinics just because I just, I don't know, I just saw the value in what everyone was trying to do with their horses. And, and so, so now when I get a lot of young horses or green horses or horses that um, need to learn um, boundaries and need to centre better, then I've been doing more long running and it's also body awareness. Um, being aware of their whole body and, 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 and things like that. So, so I've been doing more and more of it at clinics for people because I guess it's just advantageous for the horses and, and, uh, and I find I can get things done pretty good and then settle the horse down for when the people ride them a lot better with different techniques in there. Um, but where, where you're at, Megan, with the one reining, um, before you get too far behind him and teach him to one rein, okay, um, just turn this thing on. Whoops, my camera's going a bit funny. It's having a, the robot's having a little bit of a robot fit. There you go. Uh, anyway, oops. It's alive. Sorry. So yeah, when you're doing the one reining, if you're too far behind your horse, then what'll happen is your horse network just dropped out. So yeah, he'll turn around and you can't stop him. Something I would start to work on is maybe from, from his wither, start to work on the intention lesson, as in my intention. And sometimes you can hold a long dress out, like not a long lunging stick or something like that. It, um, but basically, I start to walk with my horses and wherever my toes and my shoulders are going as the direction I go. And if I tilt my shoulders like that, I'm gonna go in that direction. And basically you start to walk around the paddock and show your horse, I'm gonna point in that direction and I'm gonna go in that direction. And, and so basically he might wanna do this, but you're pointing like that, yeah, straight. And he'll go boink and go like that, okay? Cause you're not far behind him, okay? To show him what your intention is. And you show them my intention is to do that. And then you say, you might be walking like, my intention is to do that. And he'll go, oh, we're gonna collide. And I know you're going that way, so I'll readjust and go like that. And it's not like you're pushing into the horse to say, get over there. You're just saying, our paths will collide. And the horse figures that out and goes, our paths will collide. Um, and then you teach them that intention lesson where you can send them straight and point a straight line, or even tilt, twi twist your shoulders to the right a little and say, I'm gonna go that way. And then after a while, you'll be working from here. He'll want to do that, but you're saying, I'm walking straight. And you point, sometimes I point my hand out and saying, hey, and I'll put a little energy through that line there. And he'll go, oh, oh, that's right, straight. But you might have to teach him a little first before you do it, just, just educate him. And then um, he'll get better and better that you can work from the hip and point a straight line and things like that. And, and that's just a good way to do it. Otherwise, if you think he's safe, like the other thing you can do is, lead him out to where he's gonna walk a straight line. And when he's walking a nice straight line, just walk either side of him. And if you can walk around him and have that rope round his hips and he's not gonna fright and things like that, and you can go either side. Well, you can put two reins on him and start to help him with that outside rein and correct him. 
And, and if you're doing the long reining in a holder, what I suggest, if you don't have um, like any rings on that the, 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 the reins are going to run through, um, then you have to have your reins up and it's a little hard to do. But um, if, well, if you've got a holder on, you can steer from the hip a little. So, because sometimes to step out like that is a little hard. So you actually pull the rein across his hip, just, just um, below his stifle and above his hock, and you pull it across his across there, and that'll push his hip out and bend him in there a little, and then he'll do a little fishtail turn, and that's a really good one to get him sort of, and I just just, just gently guide him from that, that hand to that hand, hip over that way, hip over that way, and that's a really good lesson too, and that'll help him sort of get on his corners and stuff like that. But um, if you, if you, the only reason I do the one lining for a while with people is so they don't get two lines on a horse and the horse is spinning around in a mess and they just get stuck. I try to, and it's good to teach people to follow a horse and the horse is travelling nice and that's really good. If you, yeah, if you, so if you're using a roller, then if he's at that stage, then, then I'd put the two reins on him and just, just teach him to straighten out through two reins. And um, so with your stops, you stop and you just stop your feet and let him find his balance in the stop. When you teach him to back up, you just gently, slowly walk backwards. Don't even pull and release with the reins. And he'll go, oh, 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 and he'll lean, and, he'll, oh, and then all of a sudden he'll loosen. And then what happens is they'll float with the feel of the rein. As soon as the rein gets to that right slack, he'll just stop so he won't overstep his back ups and things like that. And um, But yeah, I mean, you can work on that intention thing where you teach them, I'm thinking straight, I'm going straight. And you show your horse, I go in that direction. Some horses are a little pushy. As I say, you could carry a long lunging stick and you can walk with it up like that and you can point your intention and if the horse looks like it's going to collide, you just put your stick out and the horse will go, oh, that door's closed, I'll go that way. You're not chasing it with the stick, you're just making a boundary. That's just another way that can help people just show the, the horse their intention and just put a boundary in to tell the horse don't keep pushing that way. Um, and then they start to go in a straight line. But yeah, if he's pretty quiet at the back, I'd, I'd just, you know, sometimes just go straight to two reins and straighten him out that way, that'll help him. Um, okay, Rachel, and I've got to talk quick because I think I realise my battery's getting a little low. Helping a friend with a horse recently started on the saddle that doesn't seem to want to go forward, okay. She gets very defensive with the leg aids being applied. How can I best help her? Okay. I was thinking about this as something I do uh, for the really tight horses, the ones that sort of brace and freeze and get cranky and things like that, um, is I teach them to lead with a belly rope. So I just put a rope around their belly with a ring in it or I put a bow line with a, with a loop that'll slip so I can loosen it and tighten it around their belly, a reasonably long one. And I... Um, Sorry, Megan, I'll just, I'll just scroll up here. I just realised you've got a bit more there. Oopsie. Um, so. I'll just scroll up. Yeah, anyway, ah, okay, Megan, yeah. Yeah, try walking from the wither and, and getting him straight. Otherwise, just when you do your turns, because he doesn't want to do a straight, get a turn, so he ends, ends up going this way, so. Um, so I'll go back to that question of yours, Megan, quickly, but when you're doing, doing your, your turns, okay, he's going to want to turn like that and come around. He doesn't want to do a straight line. You won't be able to keep him straight, but you could turn him and he'll want to come this way. And then you do a quick turn, as in like that, and you'll go, oh, I'll come on a circle this way then. And then you do a quick turn and he'll go, oh, and then after a while he'll go, oh, 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 oh and he'll go straight. And that's a good lesson too, and that's why I do long running before riding sometimes is because you can't kick them forward with your legs. You've got to figure out how you can use those reins to get them to find those straight lines and it's really good for people to learn. Um, but yeah, cool. Okay, Rachel, yeah. So with, it, with horses that are really angry and sensitive, um, give them alternative, okay? So something I do is, is if, it, if, if you know you're gonna put legs on, the horse is gonna pin its ears and get all cranky and wanna go backwards and all that sort of thing. Well, you can ride the horse without legs, excuse me for a while, until she thinks forward. That's, I, I wouldn't just do one, excuse me, I'd do them all, I'd, I'd, do, I'd, I'd work from two ends of the spectrum. The other thing I'd do is teach her to lead with a belly rope. So I'd have my lead rope on her head in the halter, I'd put a belly rope around, I'd step out to the side in front, I'd pull the belly rope till it starts to squeeze and she starts to go, 
right, 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 like that. And then, as she's doing that, you'll say lead forward with the lead rope on the head, and she'll lead forward, and then, okay. And then do that again, and again, and again, until, instead of getting cranky, she goes, I'll free my feet up and move forward. And, so, and soon enough, you put that belly pressure on her, around her barrel, and she just goes, okay, I'll lead forward until she's leading forward and you can lead around without any head pressure on her and she'll just lead with that girth, lead with that girth. Now people might say, well then when I tighten up the girth, the horse is gonna walk forward, so how do I saddle a horse with it walking forward every time I tighten up the girth? Well, the next thing you do is once she's walking with the belly rope, you squeeze it and say stop. So your intention will be to stop. So when before you were sort of leaning and going, I'm going forward, once you pull the belly rope, this time you'll go, she's be, she'll be moving, and the belly rope will be loose and then you pull it up and she'll go, oh, what do I do? And you just say, I'm stopping and you stop your feet. And if she doesn't stop, you use the lead rope that's on her nose to say stop and then you loosen the belly rope when she stops. So soon you go, go with the belly rope, stop with the belly rope. And then when you go in and fiddle and go up and down, she'll be like, oh, so you'll be also helping some of the girth problems. So because she's learned to lead off her leg, like she knows it's an answer to that squeezing pressure around her stomach around her ribs, then, then she's gonna go, oh, I can do that. Um, and then you can get on, and that may help with the legs, but something I would do is, I would lead her to the part of the arena, or the yard, or the paddock, or wherever you're riding her, that she doesn't wanna go, and then I would sit on her, and I'd ask her to go where she wants to go. So I would point her to the magnet, and I would say, now you, and teach her, say so legs mean go and she'll go to the magnet because she knows that's where she wants to go so the legs will have helped her go to where she wants to go so the legs become a little helpful so that's one way to get a positive um, attitude to the legs is only ask her to go in the direction she wants to go until you've done maybe a hundred good transitions and then all of a sudden she'll just think legs mean think forward uh, uh, you know and go forward so she'll, she'll do that um, easier the other thing I do is I just sit there without legs and I just hold the rein and lift and turn until she kind of goes, oh, I've got to move, oh, I've got to move, oh, I've got to move. And then that stuck thought, because she might be just stuck at the yards with her mind there, and that's why I say take her away and ride her back. But if you want to break her thought and, and instead of kicking to make her go, you just reset your thoughts, let's go in a new direction and see what happens. And you just hang on to the rein and she'll bend and do all this stuff and then Lift, if she's kind of just bending around your boot, just keep lifting it up until she goes, oh, 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 I might move my feet. And she'll move her feet and maybe she'll shift her thoughts. Then after a while, you'll pick up a rein and she'll just go, I'm gonna follow the feel of that rein over here. I'm gonna follow the feel of the rein over there. And I call that, well, since everyone sort of knows about the one rein stop, well, I call this one a one rein start, just to sort of have a fancy name for it. This is the one rein start. I'm picking up a rein and starting my horse. It starts moving. So yeah, you can try that as well. Um, and I would do both, because um, you still have to get her to like the legs. So you're best off teaching her to like the legs, but also breaking her thought with the reins instead of trying to break her thought by kicking her. Um, and that's really important. So next, uh, Carrie, you've got the last question. Yes. Um, pretty good today. Um, a horse is very protective of the face. I've shortened this question because it came in just before the live talk, so I quickly wrote it down because I've only got uh, one phone with me at the moment, so I can't look at the phone with the question, so, but I've pretty well got what I need in it. I have a horse that's very protective of her face. How can I put eye ointment in without using force or ruining the relationship? Yeah, it's a hard one, eye ointment. It's, um, so basically, like, like what you've been doing in the other part of the question I remember was, is, is, is you've been working on approach and retreat, approach and retreat, approach and retreat. Something you want to start to do is being able to approach and retreat from the eyes, just approach and retreat and, and just get her to a stage that you can just touch her there and she's not flinking and blinking and she just starts to relax a little. When she relaxes, you retreat. So first of all, it might be come in, touch and go, 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 um, touch and go until she's like, oh, that's not, that's okay. And then you can come in and touch and she might be a little tight and just wait there while she's just there close to the eye. And when she relaxes a little, you sort of go. And then you just keep getting closer and closer till you can kind of touch in there and she relaxes and then you just move your hand away until the, you can actually get in the corners where you might have to put it in. Because really the idea with eye ointment is just got to get a bit in the corner and 
they kind of do the rest and it's really hard because um, you know we want to go and put it in in a hurry but if you if you really want her to get confident with it yeah so so basically you'll have a bolter on her so you can yield her in a little touch and go touch and go touch and go then touch until she relaxes and then just take the hand away until you can just you know start to touch her all around the eye and then you know you might just use the ointment without the ointment and just get that little touch and go with the pointy end of the eye ointment nozzles you know it's quite a bit pointy and you just to get them in those corners there um, and the other thing you could do with the eye ointment i don't know if you're allowed to if you've got really clean hands or gloves on you could actually put a bit of eye ointment on your hand if that pushing that thing is a little too sensitive for her you could somehow you know get it to a stage you can touch and go and and and, and, and then just have some on your finger and just gently put it Put it in the corner with a clean glove on or something like that um, but yeah i've had mostly success with just touch and go and then touch until they s relax a little and just just build that bit of confidence uh, first um, and, and try and get them relaxed enough that you can do an effective job because when they're only half relaxed and then you poke them and try and squirt it in there all of a sudden the next day they're not going to let you let you near their eye it's much the same as putting a bit in a horse's mouth you touch and go, touch and go, touch and go, touch till the horse loosens its jaw and relaxes in the lips and, and mouth and then you, you know you get to a stage you can put the bit in um, and that's the same with your eye ointment so yeah thanks Carrie for that, for that one and um, yeah thank you everybody and if anyone's in the local area of Taree so Taree sort of you know you go north up to Warhope and Warhope's about an hour north and south you go south I don't know how far south <laughs> but yeah, it's at Tari Showgrounds here. We're going to be here for a four day clinic that starts the day after tomorrow. Okay, everyone? I'll see you later. Thank you.